What's up my friends? Welcome to New View Tech Review. My name is David Gelly and today we are reviewing the Galaxy S9 Plus. The Galaxy S9 Plus, a familiar take on the new Samsung flagship. Over the years, we've seen Samsung tweak the S series, sometimes listening to fans and sometimes not. But nine phones into the lineup, we see that consumers are truly being heard and treated as a voice in shaping the company's future. A welcome change to the relationship between Samsung and its loyal followers. However, with the Galaxy S9 Plus having such a similar design to last year's model and the Note 9 release being just around the corner, will the upgrades in this year's variant be enough to keep fans interested? Well, let's dig in and find out. The S9 Plus comes in at 6.22 inches tall, 2.91 inches wide, has a thickness of 8.5 millimeters, and weighs 6.67 ounces. The front and back panels are both made of Gorilla Glass 5, and encompassing the body is an aluminum frame, the same as we saw on the S8 Plus. Fingerprints and smudges are definitely an issue on the S9, but I guess that's just the price we pay for vanity and wireless charging. The S9 is IP68 water and dust resistant and can be submerged in up to 5 feet of water for 30 minutes. On the right side of the device you'll find the power button and on the left the volume rocker and Bigsby button. Dear god, why is the Bigsby button still a thing and why is it still not remappable? This is an example of where Samsung needs to listen to fans and either give us control over its functionality or get rid of it. As for colors, you can find the S9 in midnight black, coral blue, titanium gray, and the most recent edition, lilac purple. Overall, the design in a lot of ways is almost identical to the S8 Plus, but with the S10 coming next year, Samsung will want to keep any new major changes to hardware and software reserved solely for the Big Ten. As for the display, we get yet another gorgeous, vivid, contrasty, sharp, and crispy Quad HD OLED panel. Corner to corner, it stretches 6.2 inches, and the PPI stands unchanged from last year's model, coming in at 529 pixels per square inch. If you want to get the most out of your display, then be sure to go into settings to turn QHD on, as it doesn't come active by default. Samsung sets this to 1080p to help conserve battery life, but if they're going to call it a QHD display, then you'd think that it would come active by default with the option to turn it off. A strange decision by Samsung, but at least they gave us options. Viewing content is as enjoyable as we've come to expect from a Galaxy display. Text is incredibly defined, and colors are vibrant. Almost too vibrant in my opinion, but clearly Samsung knows what they're doing when it comes to OLED panels, and they continue to set the bar for superior quality in this category. Let 2018 be known for the year that Samsung really stepped up their game in the audio department. All previous models came with a single bottom firing speaker that sounded horrible and could very easily be blocked by a misplaced finger. But this year is a much different story. The Galaxy series finally introduces stereo speakers in the S9, and they're actually really good. These stereo speakers were tuned by AKG and are surround sound capable with Dolby Atmos technology. But just like QHD, surround sound doesn't come active by default, so you'll have to enable this in settings as well. At max volume, the S9 can output sound at 89 decibels, the same as we found on the Galaxy Note 8. And as for EQ levels, the speakers seem to be lacking a bit on the low end, but overall still manage to sound rich and full. On the bottom of the device, we find the beloved headphone jack. And not only do we get a headphone jack, we get a pair of AKG headphones right out of the box. These things are probably the best sounding out of the box headphones that you'll get with any phone out there. I never in a million years thought I'd say this, but Samsung now takes the lead for best overall audio in a smartphone, in my opinion. Times are changing, folks. 
The Galaxy S9 Plus comes with the Snapdragon 845 CPU and 6GB of RAM, up from 4 on last year's model. Onboard storage comes in at 64GB and is expandable up to 400GB. Android Oreo comes pre-installed out of the box and keeps the UI snappy and consistent. Battery size did not increase from the 3500 milliamps that we saw on the S8 Plus, but with the new 845 CPU we can expect a more efficient power consumption. On the bottom of the phone we find a Type-C port for fast charging, but if you prefer to go cordless then you can always just use a wireless charging pad instead. Now, since Samsung made the mistake of placing the fingerprint scanner right next to the camera lens on the S8, they heard the complaints from consumers and moved it right below the camera lens. Which is better, but I still found myself smudging up the camera lens when reaching for the fingerprint scanner. Also, the heart rate sensor still continues to plague the backs of Galaxy phones. I mean, come on, does anyone actually even use that thing? And while we're on the topic of biometric security, Samsung did their best to compete with Apple's Face ID and gave us face detection, which uses a combination of facial recognition and iris scanning technology to unlock your phone. It's nowhere near as secure as Face ID, but it still gets the job done. As for taptic feedback, well, I don't have good news for those of you who like sharp and defined taptic motors. Just like the Note 8, the vibration motor seems to be towards the top of the phone, making the taptic response seem disjointed from the operating system and its functionality. Samsung got a lot of things right on this phone, but taptic feedback was not one of them. The S9 comes with an 8 megapixel front facing camera and has an aperture of f1.7. On the back we find dual 12 megapixel sensors, one being a wide angle lens and the other a telephoto. The bottom telephoto lens has an f2.4 aperture, and the top, well, that one's a different story. This is the first smartphone to feature a dual aperture sensor, meaning you can actually switch between f1.5 and f2.4. This feature allows the sensor to let in more light for clearer content while shooting photos or videos in low light environments. Another great addition to the S series is the option to shoot video clips in 960 frames per second at 720p. The S9 uses auto detection to sense when something is quickly moving and then begins recording in 960 frames per second for 0.2 seconds and then stretches that clip out to 6 seconds. And the final product is a little grainy but still pretty cool. Other recording options vary from 1080p at 240 frames per second all the way to 4K at 60 frames per second. Here are a few quick photo and video samples taken with the front and back cameras. As you can see, photos have nice dynamic range and videos are top notch. I'd say that the only other camera out there that can beat this one in terms of quality would be the Pixel 2 XL, but the S9 would be a close second. Oh, and how could I forget, Samsung, in an attempt to compete with Apple, created the ever so creepy AR emojis. So scaring your friends on a daily basis will always be just one text message away. In the end, the Galaxy S9 Plus is a wonderful upgrade from the S8, especially when it comes to audio. It might not have a fresh new design, but in my opinion, the minor upgrades are enough to at least justify the $840 price tag. Though if you currently have the S8 Plus, I would recommend waiting to upgrade until next year when we see what Samsung has up their sleeve for their 10th variant in the Galaxy S lineup. This brings me to the question of the day. What are your thoughts on the Galaxy S9 Plus, and do you think we'll see a new design for next year's Big 10? My money's on yes. Let me know in the comment section down below. All right, my friends, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Galaxy S9 Plus. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.